Good morning. Let's continue on the welded joint design. Okay, so last week, last lecture, we had an introduction on uh, welded joints, uh, meaning on symbols, right? The type of uh, uh, welded joints. So today we'll look at the design for welded joints. Okay. Okay. So first of all, okay, uh, the focus for the welded joint in our case will focus on uh, fillet. Okay the fillet type of uh, joint, okay? Yeah. But uh, uh, let's look at a couple of uh, uh, terminologies again, okay, uh, related to the design. So, for example, this is a butt uh, type of uh, joint weld, mm -hmm. okay, this is a butt weld, and this is a fillet weld here, okay? Yeah. So, CGP represent completely joint penetration, and PGP represent partial joint penetration. So one of the key parameter in welding or welded joints is this so-called throat here, the T, okay, the throat. So this T is a key parameter basically determines the strength of this welded joint, okay, yeah. Uh, if it's a butt weld, the T is fairly easy to determine and that basically it's the thickness, okay, of the member at here. Now there's always a little bit uh, uh, this this so-called reinforcement okay portion at here for the welded joint so basically a little bit uh, extrusion at here okay so that's called reinforcement and same thing for fillet well here so you have uh, a little bit extrusion at here okay and the other important parameter here as it says here the fusion area so so the fusion area refer to the basically attachment area right between the fillet and the base metal okay yeah so for the fusion area so for this one here the fillets here is a triangle so the length of the vertical side of the triangle is called the leg so okay, so the leg uh, here. So I use the W, but we generally will use H in our uh, in our class at here. Okay, so th so basically, if this is the uh, the fillet at here, then this is H. Okay, so both sides is the same H at here. Okay, then the throat. Okay, then the throat at here is basically the di the distance. Okay, the vertical distance from here uh, to the uh, hypotenuse. Okay, so this is a T at here. Okay, this is a T. And typically, uh, this is a right triangle equal uh, sided, so it's a 45 degree. Okay, yeah. So if you know the H, then you'll be able to calculate this T. Okay, this T. So the T basically will determine this is so called throat area. Okay, this so called throat area. So the throat area is basically the T. So you can imagine. <coughs> If you cut, right, if you cut it like this, and you cut into it, it depends on how uh, how long this uh, uh, the member is, right, then you have a length, basically. So then T times the length, okay, is this throat area, okay, yeah. So the length L generally you can change, but it's the T, right, will determine this throat area. And this throat area ultimately relates to the strength of this welded joints, all right, yeah. So another terminology, like for example, we call this a toe, and this is a face, you know, something like that. Okay, this is a root. Okay, so just know uh, the meaning of this this ones here, and that should be fine. So the fusion area, if you look at the fusion area, let's see, the fusion area basically refer to the size that is here, right? Uh, you can you can uh, uh, basically calculate also easily uh, if it's a fusion area. So apparently it's H then times L, right, for one side here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, talking about the strain, uh, the the design of uh, or design analysis of welded joints. So basically, we're back to our general practice. We need to figure out what is the st what kind of stress, right? Or how much stress exists in at these welded joints, <coughs> and also how do we determine the strains, okay, for uh, for these welded joints? And then we compare each other. So then we get uh, safety factor or design, right? We get certain uh, parameters. So uh, this, the, the first 
the, the first topic that we're going to look at is we'll look at uh, basically so-called the shear stress. And then we'll, we'll explain why we just see the shear stress, okay? Um, weld, okay, and welded joints. So uh, first of all, uh, let's look at a very simple case, the butt weld. Okay, if you have a butt weld like uh, uh, like this case that right here, okay, like this case. So you can draw the butt weld. Let's say if you have a force, if you apply the force on the two sides of this, right, on two sides here, okay, then uh, the stress at this joint right here, yeah, it's not exactly going to be a shear stress, but uh, okay. Yep. So I'll just write the butt type, okay? Okay. So um, if you have a plate, you know, uh, the drawings are not that uh, great, but you know what I'm saying here. If you have four set here, so for this type, then you have a sigma is f over a, right? F over a. So the a at here, what we do is we take the a as the throat area. So that's which, which is basically it's H times or T times L, right? Depends on how you define. Let's say if they define is H at here, then it's basically if you use a T at the beginning, you can see that's the same as F over H L. Okay? Yeah. So this is the, the loading if uh, the loading is this way. Now if the loading, right, if uh, you're loading, loading it uh, okay, like this, so basically if the weld is like this, then if you load F, it's in this direction, okay? It's in this direction. Then, now this time you have a shear stress now, right? It's still F over A, and it's still F over basically HL, okay? That's about to weld. Okay? Yeah. Is that good? So, as I said, the focus is on fillet, so now let's look at the fillet type of welds. Okay, let's look at the fillet welds. Yeah. Okay. So for fillet weld, uh, let's look at a double lapped joint here. Basically, I have three plates. Okay. So we're welding the three plates together with a fillet weld. One is here, it is right here. Okay? Yeah. Now we apply the force, the loading. Let's see, this is F over here, here, and this is 2F, okay? In creative ring. Okay? Yeah. So if this is H, so, uh, well, I guess I should probably write it more precisely. Let's see, uh, H is this. Okay, so leg size is H. Okay, so leg size H. <coughs> and the throat is basically, as we defined, it's the vertical distance, right, from here to there, right? So basically, the throat, that's the T, throat. Okay. So, this is the welded joints with the fillet type weld, and uh, let's look at what kind of stress okay, exists uh, in this in this fillet weld here. Okay. So what do we do is let's do uh, first let's do a th so-called theoretical calculation. Okay. Unfortunately, we are actually not going to stick to the theoretical calculation, but we need to use the uh, results of theoretical calculation to justify what we're going to use. Okay. So. So what we do is, let's cut a cross-section, okay? Let's cut a cross-section at this uh, fillet welds that are here, okay? So uh, when we cut a cross-section, basically, we cut it at uh, arbitrary angle, okay? So not necessarily 45 degree, it's basically arbitrary angle. So uh, then if I single out, so this is my next diagram here, if I single out the top portion there, and this is what you're going to see, okay? So. Uh, actually, not this guy. Yeah, this is uh, for this is for later. Okay. 
move it further down there. Okay, so if I cut it, so let's see if I'm going to look at just the top one here. And uh, where do we cut? We cut it basically at something like this. All right. So this is a theta, right? This is a theta. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And this is the F over here. Okay. Now, you cut it at here. The, this this piece should still be in equilibrium. Then at this cutting cross section at here, right? Then we should have. Uh, Probably let's say two forces. One is this way, let's call it Fs, and the other one is this way, let's call it Fn. Okay. So altogether, the three forces should still maintain this piece <coughs> in your creative rate, right? Okay. Yeah, that's the idea. Okay. Then, uh, then basically the idea is uh, let's calculate uh, this Fs will cause a shear stress. And this Fn will cause a normal stress, right, on this cross section at here. Okay? Yeah. So, um, how much stress will it cause? Then that really depends on the total area of this uh, cross section at here, right? Yeah. So let's call this A, okay, as this uh, uh, so called shear area. Okay? So, this is the A, the area here. Okay? Yeah. If you extend that, basically, uh, imagine that if you extend it beyond to the other side, right? So that basically uh, is the A. Then let's say the total length is L. Okay? Total length is L. So uh, if total length is L, all we need is what? All we need is the, uh, this portion of the length, right? And then times L, that will be the A. That makes sense? Right? Yeah. So uh, here you need to use a little bit of high school, uh, uh, basically, geometry now. Um, so if I draw it uh, like this, okay, this is a theta, this is h, and the top angle here, see this angle here, right, is basically that angle there. And that angle, remember we said, is generally how much? 45 degree, right? It's 45 degree, okay? Yeah. So now you can use this so-called sine rule. So sine rule basically says uh, h over the uh, what do you call this angle? The angle on the other on the opposite side of uh, this uh, h. So and how much is that angle? That angle is what 180 minus 45 minus theta degree, right? And then equal to this side here, let's call this is H star. Let me call it T star, maybe. Okay, like T star. So that basically is a T star over how much sine? 45 degree, right? Yeah. So then you can solve for the T star in terms of H and the theta. Is that all right? Yeah. So then the T star you can solve, which equal to uh, basically. Um, basically equal to h over cosine theta plus sine theta, you get this, okay, yeah. So then the shear area, the A, will equal to what? The T star times L, so that's h over cosine theta plus sine theta times L, okay? That's your shear area, okay? So the area A depends on how much angle that you cut, right? Like that, okay? Is that good? Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, because equilibrium, then how much force is Fs and how much force is Fn? Then? So that's basically equilibrium equation. So Fs should equal to F sine theta, and Fn should equal to F cosine theta. All right. So now you have the area, you have the two forces, then we're able to calculate the shear stress and normal stress at this cutting cross section. Okay? Yeah. So shear stress. Tau equal to F S over A. Okay? So that's which is F sine theta 
cosine theta plus sine theta square and over HL. Okay? Yeah. And normal stress is Fn over A, uh, which is F, okay, sine theta, cosine theta plus cosine theta square and over HL. Okay, so so that's the two uh, stresses, right? That's the two stresses like that. Is that good? Yeah. So, as if you recall that uh, in the uh, uh, at the beginning of the course, we learned the review on the state of the stress and the analyze, and also we learned the distortion energy theory. So let's say uh, we're gonna do this, okay? We're gonna let's say we're gonna take a little bit the stress element, okay, out of that location, right? So if I take a stress element out out of the location, then how, what do I what I'm looking at now? Let's see. I'm gonna move this down a little bit here. Okay, so basically, if a stress element like that, okay, then you have uh, shear stress. Basically, then you have, okay, a sigma. Okay, so basically, you have a sigma x and you have a tau x y. Okay, it's a plane, uh, plane state of stress. Okay, the plane state of stress. So the the sigma mm -hmm. x that are here mm -hmm. is this sigma, and the tau x y there is the tau we just derived there. Okay? Yeah. So, then I can calculate one missile stress, which is sigma square plus three tau and one over two square root. Okay, so basically plugging these quantities over here, we can calculate sigma prime. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so now, the purpose uh, is doing the following now. We have the two situations now. So you have a sigma prime. So apparently, say sigma prime is what? It's a function of a theta, right? It's a function of theta. So the question here is, at what angle of a theta would you have the maximum well, miss that stress sigma prime? So what would you do? You take the first derivative, right? over theta, and then you set it equal to zero, okay? And you solve for the theta angle, okay? That's called a stationary point, and you get the angle is 62.5 degree. At this angle, and we get the sigma prime, which is the maximum, equal to 2.16 f over hl, okay? Over hl. And at this angle, you can substitute this sigma angle back into tau and sigma, okay, back into tau and sigma. So we get basically, okay, at this angle, we get the sigma equal to 0.623F, okay, over HL, and tau equal to 1.196F, okay, over HL, okay? So this is so-called, basically, theoretical calculation of the maximum. Is that good? Yeah. So uh, similarly, you can also do this. I mean, look at this. This is a, you calculate maximum for well, mid size stress. But if I look at the shear stress, shear stress is also a function of theta. So I guess I can also calculate a maximum of tau, okay, at a certain angle of theta, right? Yeah. So if I do this, let's say, basically, if I do d tau over d theta and set equal to zero, we find that at a theta equal to 67.5 degree, we have a maximum for tau max. And this tau max is 1.207F over HL. Okay? Over HL. Okay? Yeah. So pretty close, these two. You see, right? The two shear stress, okay, calculated based on the two maximum condi conditions, uh, they are very close to each other. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so uh, having s doing did all of done all of this one here, <laughs> but uh, as I said, we're actually not going to use this. Uh, the reason is because no theoretical value actually matches uh, the actual uh, stresses in practic uh, practical situation. Okay, 
So in practical situation, then what do we do then? So people come up with this basically a more so-called more conservative approach, which I'll show you why it's called so conservative. Basically, okay, so so the idea is okay, it's theoretical, okay, results okay, not gonna work. Well understand not gonna work, but uh, it's just uh, not going to work for all the cases. So what we do is we use a, let's say, so-called conservative okay, model. Okay, so this is a conservative model I'm talking about here. Okay, so what's so conservative? We assume there is no normal stress on that cross section. We also Basically, what we do is we basically explode, okay, the whole force, okay, all on this shear stress at here, okay, and this whole force is on the throat area, okay, 45 degree. So that's the model we're talking about here. Is that good? Yeah. So if this is the case like this, right? Basically, we explode the total F to that FS, the shear force. And then we apply, we assume this FS applies to the 45 degree cross section. Okay? Then, if this is the case, then how much shear stress do we have then? Mm -hmm. Right? Because this conservative model. So let's look at it. Shear stress equal to F over A, right? Now the A is the cross section at a 45 degree. So then, what, how much is A then? A is basically T times L, right? T times L. And T, how much is the T? So this is basically, if you draw the triangle here, this is 45 degree, right? And this is H, this is T, this is 90 degree. So guess what? The T equal to 70.7 H, right? So root, square root of 2 over 2, right? So then the total shear area is 707H times L, okay, times L. Then 1 divided by 0 0.707 is equal to 1.414F over HL. So this is the shear stress due to this conservative model. That make sense? Yeah. So now you can sort of guess why this conservative now. If you look at this value with the two shear stress that we just calculated, this guy and this guy, which one's bigger? Right? They all have the same F over HL, the coefficients. This is 1.2, 1.2, and this is 1.4, right? Yeah. So this is basically a conservative model, okay? It's a higher, your, it's higher shear stress value than your th mathematical calculation of a maximum, basically. Okay, is that good? Yeah. So, as a matter of fact, you can also calculate, right, for this conservative model, right, for this model, you can also calculate uh, the von Mises stress. Uh, based on this model, the von Mises stress can be calculated, which is 2.45. Uh, F over HL, okay, and uh, the maximum we we side from the math uh, mathematical model is how much is 2.16. So this is still uh, basically right larger than that uh, your mathematical maximum, okay, yeah. So that's why this is a conservative model, okay. So we're gonna use basically this idea. When we look at the stress of a weld, fillet weld, we will only look at the shear stress. Okay? And we will basically only look at the shear stress at which location? At the throat area. Is that clear? Yeah, that's basically the, uh, the assumption now. Okay? So, now let's look at uh, uh, sh uh, the existence of uh, stresses okay? uh, for uh, two different uh, scenarios. Right? Yeah. So the first one here is let's look at the let's call it case number one. What's the we'll call I call it the shear in the weld, the fillet weld, okay, from 
in plane torsion. Okay, so I'll explain it to you what I mean by in plane torsion at here. Okay, so here's the uh, basically the type of loading and under uh, for the type of uh, wells here. Let's you have a base metal at here, okay, and you have another plate. So uh, we're going to weld the two plates together. So let's say you can weld the two plates together actually using different uh, uh, scenarios. But let's say we're going to weld it like this. Uh, uh, like this. So you have a fillet weld at this location. Then you have a, another weld at this location here. All right? Yeah. So uh, typically, you would indicate uh, basically using uh, probably a, you probably will see a symbol like this, right? So basically symmetric on both sides, okay, and with a certain uh, maybe leg size h equal to something, okay, yeah. And uh, we have a force, okay, loaded at the tip. <coughs> okay. So good, yeah. So if I uh, look at uh, from the side view. Basically, if, I, if we look at it from this side here, right? So what do we see? We basically we see a plate, and then we see another plate at here, and then we see uh, the welds, right? And then the force is over here. Okay, force over here. Okay, so um, to get the stress, we need a free body diagram. Okay. Uh, free body diagram basically is the free body diagram for uh, for this plate at here. Okay, so we look at the plate. Okay, uh, the uh, uh, the first four the centroid. Let's see the centroid of for this well group. Okay, is this location. Okay, if this is the centroid for this well group. Okay, then. Your free body diagram. I'll draw the free body diagram on the bottom here. You have the force over here, right? You get a force here. So the force will generate a torque around this centroid, okay? Or center of mass for the well group. And uh, you need a reacting moment, right, to counter react that moment. So basically, you need a moment M in this direction to, okay, uh, cancel that. A moment from F, and that moment is basically F times this much distance, right? Yeah. At the same time, you also need a shear force, right, to cancel that uh, shear force F, right, the force at this location. So that's the uh, that's basically the free body diagram, right, for this one here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, when we come to the existence of a stress. So now we're talking about here is we're talking about the stress that existed or that exists inside the weld. And where do we look at it? We only look at where? The throat area. Okay? Again, it's that the conservative model, right? Yeah. So if I basically cut a cross section, you know, if I cut a cross section anywhere I just, you know, right in front of this location here, okay? Right in front of this location. So then, um, how, what kind of stress do we see then? Let's see if I pick a location at here. Okay, if I pick a location at here, then apparently, what kind of stress is this here? You have an F acting on this location, so you have basically a shear stress, right? Due to the F, the shear force. At the same time, you also have this M F time at the distance. Basically, due to this uh, M moment here, you will have what? That's what we call basically bending normal stress, right? Uh, if if it's a bar, basically, that makes sense. Yeah. And and bending normal stress, if you remember, the formula is what is m times r over g, right? The formula is m times r over g. So m is not going to change. M is this, and uh, r is the distance from basically uh, the center to wherever you are looking at. So if I look at from center to where I'm looking at, apparently which location has the maximum R now? The corner, right? This corner here. 
you know, if you connect these two any locations on the weld, you have a distance. That's the R. So this is the basically the location that gives you the maximum R. Maximum R will give me maximum stress. Okay? Yeah. So there are basically two types of stress exist in the welded group head here. One is due to the F, the other is due to the M. Is that clear? Yeah. So the location that the particular interest is basically here. Okay? It's this location. Okay. So for at this location, how many stress, as I said, there are two different stress. One is a stress due to the F. So this this one here, I'm going to call it tau prime. The other stress is due to what? Due to this bending moment. The bending moment causes also causes stress. What direction is that stress then? You're basically you're bending it, right? The direction of stress should be what? It's like you have a torque basically applied over here. The stress the stress should be basically perpendicular, right? to the R at here. So let's call that tau double prime, okay, at the location. Is that good? Okay. Now I'm calling it tau double prime here, okay? So this is basically you need to basically be careful right here. I will give you the exact uh, uh, exact definition now for the for the tau prime and the tau. So tau prime we call the primary shear stress. So this one basically equal to F over A, okay, F over A. And A out of here is the throat area, okay. More precisely, you should see the total throat area, okay. And the tau double prime, okay, is what we call secondary shear stress. Okay, secondary shear stress due to the moment, okay, due to this M moment. And how much is uh, tau double prime then? So the tau double prime equals basically M times R over J. Okay, M times R over J. So I'm not calling it bending normal stress. I'm calling it basically this is what we call actually can, we can call the bending shear stress. Okay? So if we consider the shear stress. Is that okay? Yeah. It it's basically we as I said, the conservative model takes into consideration is as everything is a shear stress at the throat area. All right? So that's why we call it the secondary shear stress. Even though the formula, right, it's like the 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 original one is like the uh, equating uh, bending normal stress, but we still call it a, sh a type of shear stress. Okay? Yeah. So now, if I look at this uh, existing stress here, you have a tau prime, you have a tau double prime, right? And what do we need? We need the total shear stress, right? And total stress, shear stress, the addition of the two vectors. That makes sense, right? So basically you can uh, mathematically you can add these two together, you get the total one. Right? Yeah. So uh, but that's typically not very convenient to calculate that, that uh, like that way there, okay? It involves a lot of a lot more calculation. So what do we do generally when we calculate the total shear stress is we calculate like this, okay? So let's say I'll draw the sh two shear stress over here. So one is this way, and the other is this, right? Yeah. So what do we do is uh, we okay. So this is the centroid. Okay, this is the uh, 90 degree there. Okay, we decompose the tau double prime, okay, into the x and the y direction like that. So let's call it tau double prime x and tau double prime y like this, okay? Yeah. Uh, it really doesn't matter how you tell, you can call this as y, this is x, uh, which one will be making more sense. Maybe maybe this should be y here, because uh, uh, x, y coordinates uh, satisfy a right-hand rule, right? 
Okay, so you de decompose that into uh, the two directions here. Okay, two directions. How do you decompose? I mean, all you need to know is basically the angle, right? The angle here. And the angle can be easily calculated based on the geometry of this welding. Okay, so I'll show you there are different the geometries. We don't deal with the very complex geometries. So uh, given the geometry, you can calculate. You know, you have to, this has to be perpendicular. You'll be get the, what's the number of there. Right? Yeah. So then your, uh, your tau total will be what? Will be basically the x component. The x component is tau prime plus tau x double prime square, and then plus tau y double prime square, and then take a square root. So that'll be your total shear stress, right? That'll be total shear stress. That make sense? Yeah. So this is how you calculate the total. Okay. Now, coming back to the equation for tau prime and tau double prime. So let's take a look at uh, what will be easily calculated. M, that's easy, right? So M, F times the length, that's M. And R, that depends on the geometry. You know, you can also get that R. So what about the A, what about the J, right? That we need to know that before you calculate tau prime, tau double prime. So J here, is the so-called uh, polar moment okay, of this inertia okay, group. Okay, polar moment inertia group. The group basically is an area. It's, it's also can, can be called polar moment of area basically. Okay, yeah. So mathematically, if you have a certain area, then you can basically calculate the polar moment in area, right? Yeah, you actually learned that uh, previously. So, uh, for example, you know, basically, let's say, uh, what, what's the pol what's the basically the inertia group, mm -hmm. or uh, I can also say that uh, basically it's the uh, welded it's the welded area, right? What's the welded area? So you can the welded area here. Okay, you should you should know that again. This refers to the throat area. Okay, the throat area. So basically, it's the polar moment of the geometry of the throat area. So, for example, uh, I'm not going to go into too much details here. Let's say uh, if your welded group is like this. Okay, if your welded group is like that, right? Yeah. So this is there. There's a weld here. There's a weld at here. So what I draw here, okay. What I draw it here, the two rectangles that I draw here, are the throat area. Is that okay? Yeah. So this one here, right? These two. Uh, let's see. I'll just call it. This is the throat area. Okay. This throat area. If this is the throat area, and uh, if this is the centroid, okay. Let's see. If this is the centroid of the two area, right? You know. Uh, basically, the center of mass, but uh, this area, there's no mass, so basically, that's the center, centroid here. Okay? Yeah. Then uh, the J is basically the polar moment of this total throat area about this centroid. Okay? So this, if this is the G here, so we're basically looking for what's the JG equal to. All right? Yeah. So you can imagine there is an, a rotational axis going through this G, which is basically perpendicular to the plane, right? And then you calculate basically the, 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 the JG, right? And the calculating the JG, the mathematical formula is this. So it's a double integral because it's, uh, uh, because it's this uh, uh, plane, plane area. So what are we integrating? Uh, we're integrating x, y, x squared plus y squared and then the dr, okay? So that depends on how your x and the y axis, let's say maybe your x and y and axis is defined over here like this, right? Yeah. So mathematically, that's how you would calculate the JG, okay? Yeah. So the throat area, if I, um, to be more precise at here, this one here, this side here is basically the throat length, the T. This one is another T, T2. So it could have a different T, but it depends on the leg size, H, right? Yeah. And this is the total length 
for the two sides. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not going to ask you to calculate the double integral here. So what what we're going to do is we're going to make use of a table from our textbook to uh, facilitate or, or you know basically uh, make the calculation uh, faster. So here is the uh, uh, the table I'm talking about here. Okay, so this is a table. I'll just take uh, only a portion of the table. It's a table 9 dash 1. Okay, only, I'll just take one portion of that. Okay, now what does this table, what does this table tell us is this. This is how you read this table here, okay. Now first of all, okay, let's go back to this kind of a, a generic drawing it here. Uh, when you calculate the JG, you know, you basically based on certain uh, T1 and T2, that's the throat's length, right? The throat, T. But if we set this T1 or T2 as a unit length 1, okay, as a unit length 1, then we are able to generate a table like from table 9-1 at here, okay? So table 9-1 is basically it's based on a unit okay, length Okay, that for uh, for the throat area. Okay. Mm. Or the for the throat waist T. Okay, this is the table nine dash one is based on here. Okay, so let's say, uh, for example, right? Uh, what do we have here? Uh, it you have. This is the one, basically one uh, type of weld. It's like you just have one line of welds, right? Uh, if I go back to this drawing in here, it's basically uh, what does it look like? Essentially, it's just one weld at this location, for example, right? Or at this location. That makes sense? Yeah. If that's the case, then what is the J value then? So the area, first of all, the area. It's 0 0.70 h times d. Okay, h times d. So that's that actually makes sense because uh, that should be a 0 0.7 0 0.707 at here, right? Yeah, it's like the 0 0.70 h times l. But this is the h, so that's the throat area. There's only one, right? It's this. If you look at this one, there are two wells. What's the area now? It's 1.1 414 h times d. That's the total throat area, right? Yeah. And you also have the uh, average, basically the centroid location, x bar and the y bar, corresponding to this uh, geometry out of here for the welds. That's given on this column here, right? So you actually you need this information. Okay, you need information to calculate the tau double prime. Okay, because the tau double prime, remember, is how much is a M times R over J, right? So, for example, if uh, if uh, if this is a well group here, if we're going to calculate uh, uh, the tau double prime, so apparently this is the location that's particular interest to us, right? Yeah. So then, what's the R now? The R is basically what x bar square plus y bar square and then square root, right? Yeah. So instead of you figure out yourself, you can use the information from the table. J at here is called unit second polar moment area. Remember why this unit? Because we the table is generated based on the unit length for the throat width, the T, right? The T. It's set it to one. Okay? So then uh, the J at here is called JU. It's a unit second polar moment of area. Then what would be the actual J then? Right? So the actual J is basically 0 0.707 H times the J U. Okay, this one is the actual T, right? It's the actual T. So just scale it back, you will get your actual J.
That make sense? Yeah. So G U at here is only a unit second polar. You don't use this for your calculation. You have to apply this one first, then you substitute into the uh, moment equation at here to calculate double uh, tau double prime. Okay? Yeah. If you're interested, I can show you a couple of examples how the GU is derived, basically purely based on the double integrals, you know, stuff like that, and you know, and then you will be able to get this value here. Okay? So to 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 uh, uh, to to uh, uh, bring to your attention more is you look at the GU here. What does GU depends on? Depends on the D, depends on the B. They are not arbitrary symbols. They are from your actual well group geometry. This is the D, this is the B. Is that good? <coughs> okay. So uh, if you look at this one here, okay, there's one missing though. What is what is missing? It doesn't have what I draw it here, right? So what I draw it is what? What I draw it is not this. When you have this one here, it basically your your weld your welding is like uh, it's like this. You weld it here and then underneath that plate over there, right? That's for that one. But what I draw it is you have a weld group like this. Okay? So basically you can use the two lines for illustration. So, what does that mean? Do we need to recalculate this well group or not? Do we need to calculate the GU for that? Or we can recycle this? Recycle this. Because this is basically rotation, right? Rotation about this G at here. And it's inclined rotation. So, so, so if the geometry is the same thing, it, the G value you calculate will be the same thing. Okay? But, then you got to be careful now. So basically, you need to, be, if you want to recycle this one here, okay? So then you need to know that this is going to be your B, and this is going to be what? The D value, okay? The D, okay? So if the question gives you is this group here, if the question tells you certain dimension, then you need to know what is B, what is the D, so then you can calculate the GU. That make sense? Yeah. So otherwise, uh, you will get the wrong GU, then the rest of the calculation will be wrong, right? Yeah. So uh, just just to be careful about this one in here, okay? Yeah. Uh, similarly, for other shapes like this, you know, if you have a, a geometry like this, then this is your GU. Right? You need to know this is the B, this is D, and the X bar, Y bar, mm -hmm. and you also need to know where is the critical location. For example, for this one here, which critical location would you look at? Well, are you going to look at this location? Or or here, or here, or what? Maybe I should look at where? At the edge, right? Yeah, because that's the location wh which has the maximum distance from the centroid, right? Yeah, from the centroid. So the question is, what will be the R then? How do you calculate the R? You can based on this x bar and y bar, right, to calculate the r. Okay? Yeah. Was that good? So we'll look at more examples in the in the next lecture. Okay? Yeah.